that's when marketing starts working really well. Because like marketing is not going to in a long way in a long term fix the strategy. I think it start starts with a really strong understanding of what your business actually wants to do and then propagating it down to marketing channels. Welcome to What Gets Measured, a Ninja Cat podcast about marketing performance management, metrics, and effectiveness. Because what gets measured gets managed. I'm your host, Jake Sanders. A passionate technologist, futurist, and entrepreneur, Vitaly Pachursky is the co-founder and chief operations officer of StackAdapt, a programmatic advertising platform helping brands accelerate customer engagement and acquisition. With experience in advertising at the agency and executive level, Vitaly is bringing a diverse suite of skills to the Ninja Cat podcast to talk about programming success into digital advertising. Vitaly, how are you, sir? Jacob, thanks for having me. Oh, man. So glad you're here. Uh, so let's jump in. Let's talk about Stack Adapt uh, right off the bat with hundreds of ad tech vendors out there, maybe millions. <laughs> what did you see was lacking in the marketplace that sparked you to co-found Stack Adapt? Yeah. You know, market is absolutely massive. Um, when we started the company, so we, will, we went to a market in 2014. And before that, I, uh, I worked in a... Um, in a startup in an ad tech space as well. And I worked on an agency trading desk. And so that's where I met my, one of my co-founders. And mm -hmm. to be honest, Stack Adapt was born out of the pain that we experienced using other platforms on the market. So we firsthand used them and there was clear opportunity for us. You know, we, we looked at it and we said, we think the future is going in a different direction. And we, mm -hmm. we took a leap of faith and, you know, kind of the rest is history. <laughs> So, so speaking more about, you know, the rest is history, but here we are in the future thing, things are, uh, changing. Uh, it's an emerging kind of industry as it grows, things change. Cookies are crumbling. Marketers are fumbling. Uh, what, what's your hot take on the current state of digital advertising and, and where do you see things headed? Well, you know, everything is becoming digital, which is certainly helping us. Um, and you know, when it comes to to, uh, to advertising increasingly is being transacted uh, using software uh, or bought programmatically, uh, right. which is certainly also helping us as well. Um, but you know, in the in the programmatic industry, there's a lot of different trends, and the cookie trends and and the topic of privacy is certainly just one of them. Um, mm -hmm. I'm happy to to talk more about this. You know, when it comes to just overall trends related to privacy, you know, the main the main two um, driving factors um, mm -hmm. are really uh, legislation related to privacy, uh, which started with GDPR, um, CCPA, and it's uh, it's quite possible uh, that there will be more legislation related to privacy. And then obviously technology platforms like uh, Safari and Firefox and so forth that are um, taking a more technological approach to managing user privacy. Um, so I think the way what what what's coming down the road is that the ecosystem will likely just become more fragmented and more complex to navigate, which doesn't make things easy because you know the the need for marketers to advertise is not going anywhere. In fact, I think it's only get, getting more competitive for for brands. The the internet, the web is so crowded. There's so much. Uh, the battle for attention is is fierce, and so I, I don't see advertising going anywhere. And the desire for marketers to use more automated solutions to do that will stay. The question is how to stitch the complexity of all these different ecosystems that are getting increasingly more fragmented, more complex. Um, and you know that's that's part of the part of the solution that we're offering to our clients. Something interesting that you just said there was it does feel like advertising big big A, like the idea of advertising is going away, but it isn't. It's, it's becoming more fragmented. And I, I think that's kind of an interesting way to think about it. Uh, wh what are some of the ways that Stack Adapt is, is helping people get into that attention area? Like, like how are you guys getting into um, those places and, and breaking into that battle for attention? Yeah, so uh, one of the uh, you know what one of the value propositions that our company brings to the table as a platform to access tens of thousands of publishers at scale is really um, 
the, the vast number of users that you can target and then being able to employ scalable decision-making technologies like machine lear- using machine learning to be able to cherry pick users that you're, you're specifically interested in. So this combination of scale and targeting, uh, which originates from being able to just cherry pick out of a big number of users. Um, so when we think about uh, that, you know, inherently, uh, we as a platform continuously look for ways to, uh, to allow brands or agencies that we work with that represent brands is to find users across more, more channels, more devices. And in our case, you know, we started off with native advertising, expanded into display, video, uh, connected TV, programmatic audio. This, this year, we're launching in-game advertising. It's really all originates from um, helping brands maximize, uh, basically have a, uh, an opportunity to be able to reach any user and then decide basically which of the users you want to target. So that's sort of like the value that uh, a platform like ours bring, brings to the table. So thinking more, and you know, maybe this is a little bit more about that big A advertising and the way that people approach it, but the, the creative, like the ad itself that's being served, it seems like there's always going to be a race to match technical skills in digital advertising, but what's the role of creative in effective programmatic advertising? Is, is there a way to be creative in the way you approach this, or is it all just technical um, is that kind of a fair question? I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, we, for the longest time, if clients came to us and asked us, would you be able to help us to create, for example, native ads out of display ads, which would say, you know, we're a tech company, you know, sorry, <laughs> can't help you there. Right. We'll, at, just, we'll just serve it, right? I mean, just kind of getting it served. Yeah. You come to us, use the platform and off you go. But right. It, you know, after a while, we realized that there is a huge, un, uh, huge opportunity in helping clients create much better advertising, because you, you know, you can have the the best technology when it comes to reaching right user at the right time, but if the ad itself is not interesting, <laughs> boring, right, right, like all that tech, all that complex machine learning, like it's it doesn't do do as much. It, as it as it could, as it as it should. Yes, exactly right. I, but I love that because there is an admission here. Because a lot of people like that silver bullet flavor. They're like, "Well, this is the only thing you're going to need." And you say, "Well, you're actually going to need a good ad too." Yeah. The <laughs> truth is, truth is, you know, when we're talking about advertising, and inherently, advertising is is a vehicle to grow business. Uh, at the end of the day, business grows by acquiring and retaining customers, but there's so many other things that go into building a successful business. It's not, and that advertising is not a single, it's not just, it's not a one thing that you need to do well for the rest of the company to be successful. There's so many other moving pieces when it comes to building a successful business. And that's why I think to our earlier point, there's, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of software companies solving all kinds of problems for businesses. Uh, you know, in our case, we're obviously focusing on specifically on advertising. But when it comes to creative, that's one of the big pillars that we're focusing on um, mm-hmm. as one of the pillars that we're focusing on on the product side. Um, there's certainly ways to, to bring more automation when it comes to creation, perhaps using more uh, rudimentary ways to personalize the creative, maybe dynamically inserting some elements within the creative. Um, but the, the big idea behind the creative the big kind of reveal uh, behind a a brand strategy like there's no ai that's going to be able to do this for you so it's all people who are inherently coming up with really great ideas who are are good at analyzing data and uh and coming up with these big ideas that then are turned into advertising and you sort of like adding gasoline uh, into fire uh Oh my gosh. And, and, and it's that combustibility. I mean, you just, bring, ah, just getting hairs. They're just, I'm, I'm, the hairs are standing up on my arms because of this. <laughs> um, cause you're so right. It's so great that you understand that this is actually a, a force multiplier. If you have a better ad, because it's just going to make all this text go zippity zap. Um, so it makes sense that you guys are thinking of that as a strategic pillar, um, as you're yeah. headed you know, at the end of the day, for for company, 
the product market fit or pre- uh, 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 distribution fit is so important, right? right? How oh, can you yeah. possibly create a really good advertising campaign if you don't know exactly um, what, what problem or what value your product generates for which types of users? And something like that, it has, to be, it has to start at a much earlier stages, way before you start planning. Am I going to run uh, connected TV ads or audio ads? You know, at that point, you should already have a very deep understanding about what, what is the business objective that you're trying to pursue. Thought log. It, that's just beautiful. I'm, I'm waving a big foam finger. I have a big flag. Yay. Okay. Um, so next question. How does measurement and management of marketing data play into the skill set of modern marketers and agencies. Um, what, what's your thought on analytic skills? You know, um, I think I, I started touching up on this question uh, just uh, you know a minute ago, but mm. you know, it's a it's a really big topic because, well, there's a lot of there's a lot of challenges related to it. First, obviously, you need to have systems in place that allow not just storing this data. But being able to combine this data and you need to have uh, not just technologies in place, you need to have people who manage these technologies and integrate them. You need to have people who actually analyze this data, derive insights. You know, I'll, I'll tell you about how we operate as a company. You know, we, we have almost 600 people right now. Uh, we have teams scattered across the whole company that are focusing on analytics from, uh, from, from analysts to business intelligence, uh, teams within marketing and finance data scientists on the, on the engineering side, you know, mm-hmm. they're all trying to, uh, in many ways, answer similar questions, which are related to how can Stack It Up grow faster? How can we deliver more value to our customers? And I'll tell you that, you know, because there's so much data these days, everybody wants to track everything. Oh, yeah. You know, just, just the, the act of m- making that data centrally available for everybody is a huge enormous effort i think actually you know that unification of data is is a much bigger challenge that interpret than interpretation of data interpreting data i think you just need to have a really good understanding of um of the business and the and customer the market um you know i have mm. i study finance I, I i have a decent understanding of uh of being able to read the data but my strength right. comes from having really deep understanding of how Stack Adapt operates. Uh, mm-hmm. So as a consequence, you know, once I have this data presented to me, I can, then, um, I can then infer from this data and derive hypothesis that, that then later could be validated by you know, analysts running more uh, queries, running more analysis. But right. yeah, at an executive level, you want, you want to start with a hypothesis. Like what is it that you want to test, uh, validate with data? Um, and then you obviously have to have, you know, a lot of resources internally to, to be able to put it in, uh, into action. And so it's interesting that you, you're saying that it's the unification of data. That's a bigger challenge than interpreting data. So it isn't necessarily analytic skills. It is just this idea of bringing all of the data sources together. Uh, can you speak more about that centralization? I mean, like, what, what what are some of the barriers that you're seeing um, with clients that are coming to Stack Adapt? Um, you know, what what's what's like a what's a what's a horror story that you have with a client who came and maybe didn't do this due diligence of centraliz- centralizing some of their data? What what's do you have like a horror story? <laughs> so, so unfortunately, I don't because you know we I like our company operates more. Um, sort of like on a periphery of of a, of a mm. business, you know. At the end of the day, you know, we, our uh, our clients come to us for advertising purposes. Uh, so um, I have a much better uh, insight in terms of like how Stack Adapt operates um, and how data, uh, how we're managing data internally, because you know there's a lot of different systems. Um, well, then yeah, talk about that. Well, I mean, what are what are some of those frustrations? Because you must have thousands of yeah. sources that you have to do yeah it's i think the, the the biggest challenge that we have probably is you know taking uh stack adapt platform level data and 
deriving insights from that in combination with all the financial, for example, or uh, CRM data internally. You know, uh, there's just so much data that's being generated, like petabytes of data. Um, and, you know, we don't, like we own obviously Stack It Up software. Um, so we, we uh, we're able to derive a lot of insights on the platform because we, we obviously host, like we handle all the uh, AWS host, hosting ourselves. So, but right. pu- taking all this data and then pushing it into other platforms, that's where a big challenge comes. Um, I think from a campaign execution level, mm, it's a lot easier because you're only looking at sort of like uh, fairly um, light l- level of data. But if you're trying to push terabytes worth of data into, into other systems, and slice and dice data in some really, really crazy ways. I think that you know that's where you know you start seeing really big bottlenecks um, mm, oh. in being able to actually um, pr- even simply process those queries. Oh my god! I mean, and it's such a common thing. I, I we hear it all the time um, when I'm talking to teams of any size. Really, it doesn't matter. You know, if you're small, medium, large. You're dealing with these problems, but you, you're, you, you, you have a way to think and you have a way to uh, adjust your sales because you said the most important thing is you have to start with why. Why do you want the data? Because then that guides the way you behave on curating it and you know, accessing those insights. I mean, do, do you still think that that why is the key, that hypothesis is the key? Yeah, I, I think it all starts with a hypothesis because there's just infinite number of questions you can be asking about your business, right? So you want to, you want to just maybe start with the most pressing questions. You know, what are these 10 questions that if you could get an answer to, it would really supercharge your business. And I think um, like given these hypotheses to your analytics teams or teams that handle technology uh, and have them actually uncover those, uh, those data points, Mm-hmm. Then at an executive level, you can you can uh, you can see if data um, supports sort of some of the decisions that you're looking to make. Let's let's sort of consolidate everything. We've just made all these wonderful observations about, about where we're at with programmatic advertising. What what data analyst skills and interpretation and then uh, ingestion of information and then how lobbying and technology and platforms are affecting us, but you can't tell that to one person, you know, they'd have to listen to this whole show. But if you could condense all of your thought, imagine you're on an airplane and you have a marketer sitting next to you and you've just landed and you have only a few seconds to give them one piece of straight advice about programmatic advertising specifically. Mm -hmm. What is your little gem that you pass off to them? I think to me, I, I, I'm a big picture type of person. So <laughs> mm-hmm. you, you have to think about business m- much more holistically than in isolation to a specific uh, you know, channel like, like programmatic, for example. I think it really, to, to my point earlier, you really want to step, take a step back and really think about business growth and uh, those business objectives and then think about um, I have a very clear understanding of what those, uh, what those are before you start investing in creative, picking channels and programmatic and so forth. Um, mm. And that, that, that requires a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of alignment between, um, between teams and executives in a the company. There, there needs to be a clear vision. Uh, but that's when, that's when marketing starts working really well. Because like marketing is not going to, in a long way, in a long term, fix the strategy. I think it start, starts with a really strong understanding of what your business actually wants to do and then propagating it down to marketing channels. You're so cool. I really, really appreciate you have a great head on your shoulders and what a great platform and what an awesome time to be involved in this place because you're so right. That's so fractured. People still want ads we're gonna serve ads i don't know man i i it's it's like at once it's kind of scary but it's also sort of exciting i mean do you feel excited about things oh i i I love it you know i wake up every day just feeling uh, you know that we're we're building something new and it's uh it's it's exciting i wouldn't 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 do anything else 
cheese or chocolate? Cheese or chocolate. You have to choose one. Oh, um, cheese. All right. Email or Slack? Slack. Really? You say it like that. You don't like emails. No, I don't like emails. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you get to a certain level, but there's I nothing just... I, ha- I don't like more than phone calls. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Zoom and, calls and, and don't yet. count. <laughs> yes, I hear that. I hear that. Um, okay, so long walk on a beach or hike in a forest. Uh, beach and a swim. Okay, I like that. Dive right in. But how about basketball or a basket of golf balls? Basketball. Okay. Radiohead or Coldplay, and it's okay to say neither. Coldplay, you know, I, I mostly listen to uh, rap and R&B, but Coldplay is the only like band that I listen to, so Coldplay. <laughs> I love what a great exception you've made in your playlist. Um, okay, and finally, Haunted Hotel or Haunted House? Um, what's the hotel? <laughs> Yeah, there's more space to run around. Then you can uh, Um, leave the hotel. (laughs) Unless you're in Shining, maybe. (laughs) What Gets Measured is a Ninja Cat podcast. Please rate and review the show wherever you find your podcasts. Share this episode on social. And visit us on the web at ninjacat.io.